Well, would you look at that? I did it. <laughs> oh, that is crazy. Hi everyone, welcome back to another video. So in the last video, we did the LCD display and then now we're moving on to DC motors. I do just want to point out quickly though, before we begin, that the previous tutorial to this, which if you have a look here, is actually the 8 LED with the 74HC595. So I've already done that lesson as part of the basic starter kit. So I'm not going to go through that again, but I'll link it here. You can watch that video if you want to follow along. That video is part of the basic starter kit, so I've done that. So now I'm moving on to DC motors, which is lesson 23. So just to confirm, I'm basically skipping lesson 22. Okay, let's get started with DC motors. This I'm excited for. I mean, who, how could you be an electrical engineer without being, you know, at least comfortable with a DC motor, right? So in this lesson, you will learn how to control a small DC motor using an Uno R3 and L293D IC, okay? So we need a breadboard, Uno R3, an IC, a fan blade, interesting, with a 3.6 volt motor, five mil to mil jumper wires, a power supply module, okay, and a nine volt, nine volt, I don't know, nine volt one amp adapter. This is interesting, you can see here that, you know, when you're actually building circuits, you're going to be doing using lots of components. And so I like the idea that now they're bringing in new components and a mixture of components to make one circuit work. I like that. Okay, so the small DC motor is likely to use more power than the Uno R3 board digital output can handle directly. If we try to connect the motor straight to the Uno R3 pin, then it's likely to damage the Uno R3 board. So we use a power supply module. So we use a power supply module provides power supply. <laughs> <laughs> obviously this is a chinese translation so so you got the product specifications of the power supply module that's fine um the only thing here we got setting up output voltage the left and right voltage output can be configured independently so here and here to select the output voltage move jumper to the corresponding pins note power indicator led and the breadboard power rails will not power on if both jumpers are in the off position which is the two middle pins. Okay, that's fine. Interesting. So we've got five volts on this side, three volts on this side. So I've used these power supply modules quite a bit, but I've just used them just to supply five volts. I haven't used them to do anything else like moving jumping pins or anything like that. Okay, so make sure you align the module correctly on the board. So it's just making sure that you've got the negative side on that side, positive on that side. That's fine. And then here's the L29 3D chip. This is a very useful chip. It can actually control two motors independently. We are just using half the chip in this lesson. Most of the pins on the right hand side of the chip are con for controlling a second motor. Okay, most, not all. We've got the product specifications. So it's from Texas Instruments. So these are its specifications. I'll leave that to you guys. They're half H drivers. It's designed to provide bi directional drive currents. Okay, I'll skip this again just because it's a bit technical stuff and. Even me, second year electrical engineer, looking at it, I'm like, I don't really understand, like Darlington transistor sync, pseudo Darlington source. Yeah, let's skip that. What I find interesting slash annoying about these tutorials is they'll go deep into the inner workings of the devices, which is like an, from an electrical engineering standpoint, perfect. But most people that are buying a cheap Arduino kit on Amazon, I don't think they're interested in the, you know, how the, the logic gates work inside an IC chip. Like we want to know how to use the Arduino, how to use it and the code. So um, I find it annoying that they just focus purely on like the, the inner workings of the chip and they just copy and paste information from the data sheet instead of explaining the code, which is usually, I, I'm assuming here, what most of us are going to be interested in. But hey, tell me if I'm wrong in the comments. All right, so Arduino connections, M1 PWM connects this to a PWM pin. They're labeled on the Uno. Pin 5 is an example. Output an integer between 0 and 255. So I've used this before where you um, control a motor on my robot. So I should be quite familiar with this. Where 0 will be off, 128 is half speed and 255 is max speed. M1 direction, whoops. M1 direction 0, 1 and, and M1 direction 1, 0. Connect these two the two digital Arduino pins, output one pin as high and the other pin as low and the motor will spin in one direction. Reverse the outputs to low, high and the motor will spin in another direction. Okay, here's the uh, schematic. 
So the motor is not connected to the Uno R3, it's connected to this chip. Connected via pin 6 and pin 3 of the chip. And then we've got the Uno R3. Doesn't look like it's out when we're powering the chip, it seems. Oh, we are here. So well, V plus V motor, we're connecting it to 5, five volts, it looks like. Oh, okay, we're connected it to 5 volts on the breadboard. Because we're using the power span module, right? So this five volts here is connected to the power span module, I assume. And then we're just using the three pins from the Arduino to basically give the pulses. Mm. Not the easiest of wiring diagrams to read. I'm a bit confused by it, but all right, let's give it a go. Build the circuit. Okay, so I assume we're going to be using. Are we using this? I don't know. We're using the breadboard. Okay, this I assume is the DC motor, which it does look like it is. So then we're looking for the IC, which I think is going to be in here. Like that could be it. Have a look. All right, so these look the same, but just make sure because they're not they're not the same. It's not this one we're after. It's this one. So you can see that it says L L two nine three D. And then I must not forget about the power span module, which is this thing here. Power span module. So I've lost my blue tack, so I'm going to use a little bit of double-sided sticky tape to um, hold my Arduino down. Go down to the bottom there. And like that. All right, so I've got all my mail to mail wires here, so let's pick out some colors. All right, so the interesting thing as well is that we need to power this. So I, you just have, you need to have a double USB or you can use a DC barrel. I believe that the kit came with a DC barrel, so I'll use that. Usually I use the USB, but let's just take a look inside this kit. Yeah, so the kit comes with this, so you can just use this to power the uh, USB. As you can see here, for this, it outputs 9 volts DC and 1 amp. And if you have a look on the power supply board, you can see at the DC barrel input, it says 6.5 volts to 9 volts in. And then these, these rails will output 5 volts. So. That's how this works. All right, so plug this into here. And then all you need to do is just make sure that when you're plugging this in, just positive to the red side and blue to the negative to the blue side. So just plug that into there. So, and there you go. You've now basically got a fully powered breadboard where both of the rails are powered. So now this makes, honestly, it makes using the breadboard so much easier. So keep that there. Uh, again, so this breadboard is just sliding all over the place, but the breadboards come with these sticky things on the bottom, so you can just remove this. What I do, which is generally like instead of removing the whole thing, for example, so because my power supply module is on this side, this is the side that's going to be moving. So if I just do this and then just rip that off like that, so now I've still got all of this that I can take off, and this just gets punted like that, and it's good to go, it's not moving. All right, so in the interest of trying to follow the tutorial and trying to make it easy for people, I'm going to just move this because what I want to do is I want to keep my, what I'm doing equal to the wiring diagram. So you can see on the wiring diagram, pass my modules over this side. So let's put this here like that. Okay, and then the Arduino, I'm going to spin it around. So that ended up being way longer than I thought it would be, but it's done now. <laughs> okay, so now... Um, Let's put our IC chip in. So the chip is going in with this part, the notch at the top there, facing the power supply module. So they've put it in row like 27. So I'll do the same. Getting these things is getting these things in is a bit difficult, but you get used to it. That's in. Okay, and then let's go with our DC motor. Here we've got two leads. For some reason, they're labeled green and yellow on our diagram. But I've got red and blue here. So red and black, sorry. So I'm doing, it doesn't matter which way you put these in. But if you reverse the polarity when you're doing something like, for example, connecting to a battery, it'll just spin the opposite way to you, that you think it's going to spin. Okay, so let's go with... Uh, We'll go with the red one to third pin. Yeah, to the third pin. 
that red to the third pin and then we'll go black to that the fifth sixth pin so it's looks like it's that one that's not really easy to see on the schematic so yeah so it's two there's two there and then that one okay so that's fine so that's done so our little motor is not really sitting properly but okay put that there for now Okay, and then we need to ground between our Arduino and our ground. So ground and ground. Then let's do our let's do the two blue ones. So we've got go with this darker blue. So the first pin on the IC on this side, and that's going to digital pin five. Okay, done. And we've got a lighter blue, which is the second pin, and that's going to our digital pin four. Okay, then we've got look at this wiring, it just is so horrible. <laughs> and we've got orange pin three, and that's going to our second pin. This is so messy already. All right, we're also grounding the fourth pin on the IC here, and that's going. So yeah, we are grounding it, yeah. The ground. Okay. <laughs> I've got no no room to move here at all. Alright, and then we're powering from VCC, so from our positive rail. We'll power in the first pin. That pin there. And that's it. We're done. So I'll try and just give you guys a little swoosh around so you can see. Not the not the easiest thing to look at, is it? Hopefully with the, with this video and then also the wiring diagram, I think you guys should be able to build this. But it is it is a bit complicated. Okay, so that's done anyway. So let's now take a look at the code. The code below does not separate power supply, i.e. a battery. It instead uses the 5 volt power from the Arduino. Note that this would be risky without the L293D controlling it. Never connect the motor directly to the Arduino. Because then when you switch motor off, when you switch a motor off, you get electrical feedback. With a small motor, this will damage your Arduino. And with a large motor, you can watch an interesting flame and sparks effect. <laughs> I do love a little bit of um tongue-in-cheek or whatever. After wiring, please open the code. Um, and after program loading, turn on all the power switches. Huh? Turn on all the power switches. Oh, I think they're talking about the pins on the on the. Huh? Yeah, I'm confused actually. Maybe they're talking about the pins on the power supply module. The motor will slightly rotate clockwise. Or are you talking about in the code? See here, one way then reverse fast load example. No, okay. The motor will slightly rotate clockwise and anticlockwise for five times. Then it will continue to dramatically rotate clockwise. After a short pause, it will dramatically rotate anticlockwise. Then the controller board will send a PWM signal to drive the motor. The motor will slowly reduce its maximum RPM to the minimum and increase to the maximum again. Finally, it comes to a stop for 10 seconds until the next cycle begins. Interesting. And that's the end of the code. All right, let's load our code. Okay, so let's hit upload. Nice to know we shouldn't have any library issues. Okay, we've got some flashing. Oh, look at that. <laughs> it's actually spinning. All right, let's attach this. Um... <laughs> this is brilliant. Wow, look, yes, yeah, so it's slowing down. That's amazing. That is amazing. Wow. It waits for 10 seconds and then finishes. It should start again. So let's just have a look at what it's trying to do again. So the motor will slightly rotate clockwise and clockwise for five times. There you go. Then it will continue to dramatically rotate clockwise really fast. After a short pause, it will then go anticlockwise. Then the controller will send PWM to drive the motor. The motor will slowly reduce. So it gets slower. There you go. Look at that. It goes slower and slower and slower. And then it will go really fast, slowly up to fast again. Slowly up to fast actually works as a decent fan as well that is brilliant that is absolutely brilliant
What happens if I just leave it down like this? Will it lose its mind? Yeah, look. <laughs> okay. Um, how do you pause this? So it's just disconnect ground, right? I don't. Okay. I'm not sure about just disconnecting ground. I'll let's try it, but I might break something, right? I could just. I'll probably just turn this off like that. Okay. So I think I can just press this button to turn it off, and then it should just it's off now. Okay. So let's have a look at this code. I mean, I can't imagine it being too complicated. Okay, so here's our setup of our code, which we're basically enabling. Okay, so here we're defining our pins five, three, and four. Which is what we've done here: five, three, five, four, three. So direction A is pin three, direction B is pin four, and our enable pin is pin five. And then what we're saying here is that we're setting pin five, uh three and four to outputs and we're starting our serial monitor okay let's uh, let's run the code and um have a look at what's happening on the serial monitor so connect that turn that all right the motor's going take a look at the serial monitor one way then reverse fast slow example PWM full, then slow. Yeah, so we're basically printing something for each portion of the code. That's it. Okay, yeah, let me disconnect the Arduino. So the beginning of our program here, we've got a for loop, which is and in direction A high and direction B low. I'm assuming you can't have A and B both high at the same time because then you would be saying go to the right, go to the right, go to the left at the same time. So the motor should. Although, yeah, no, that, that shouldn't work. If you set it to go really high to the right and then really high to the left at the same time, it should just stay in the middle. But you might, I don't know if you might damage something. Okay, so. Then we've got enable low, meaning turn off the motor. Okay, so here we're saying spin to the right, and then it's got reverse. I don't know which way is. Let's assume for now one way is right, and then reverse is left. I mean, it shouldn't make a difference, but we're going to go to the right, then we're going to wait for half a second, then go to the left, then wait for half a second, and we're going to do that five times because we've got our for loop here. So this, if you've done programming, this should be super easy to understand. So this is okay. Then we're sending both, we're sending the enable pin low. So therefore, we're just basically turning off the motor if we'd set the enable pin to low. And we're waiting two seconds. Then we're doing our fast slow example. So we're turning back our enable pin on. And then we're sending it to the right to go basically as fast as it can to the right. Then we're waiting three seconds. Then we're turning it off. Okay, so we're going to the right as fast as we can for three seconds. This is an important point when it comes to dealing with motors, is that when you're setting this to high, if you didn't put this delay of three seconds, it would just go to the right for you know less than a less than a micro millisecond basically, and then go straight to this and turn it off. So you're sending this to the right for three seconds, then you're sending the whole motors off making them so it's taking enable to low then you're setting enables to high again so turning the motor on but this time you're making the direction a low and direction b high so you're going to the opposite direction for three seconds and then you're sending direction a low so now they're both going to be off and do that for two seconds so motors off for two seconds then you're okay so this is what i'm interested in so pwm full then slow okay so we're making it go which way are we sending it? Okay, we're sending it to the right, direction A high, direction B low, and we're saying do that at 255, which is maximum speed, okay? Wait in two seconds, and then we'll go into 180, which is, you know, less than 255, then 128. I know they've got half speed here, but I don't know if it makes sense, it's not half, but we're basically slowing the motor down from 180 for two seconds to 128, to 50, then we're making it go fast, 128, 180, 255, and then we're turning it off.
Okay, so I don't know if I necessarily need to do anything to this code. I mean, it's to be fair to them, which I appreciate. It's just super simple code, really. Let me do this. Let's copy and paste this code and then let's go to a new one. Okay, no, wait. Probably the better thing to do is file, save as, and we can just do DC motor 2. I just want to do just the uh, pulse width modulation part. So get rid of all of this. Here's a PWM bit. So start the motors. Okay, so I've kind of just stayed in my comfort zone, you know, with most of these uh, tutorials, just because you know, you're recording on YouTube and I know that I'm not that great at programming. But let me try and do this bit of code. So you know this where you've got its pulse, it's going down from its highest speed to its lowest speed. So here's what I'm going to try and explain to you that I'm going to try and do. Hopefully you know what to do, but I probably won't know how to do it. But I'm going to basically set a counter, set a variable, set it to 255. And then I want to just decrease by one speed, I don't know, every 100 milliseconds. So it should slowly get slower over time using a for loop, right? So instead of what we've got here is 180, 128, 50. I want to count down from 255 down to zero using it using a counter basically. So let's try that. I don't even know how I'm going to go about doing it, but so we've got this int i variable. Let me just open up this DC motor code, copy the for loop that they had in there. I obviously can write a for loop, but uh, I haven't written an actual for loop for a while. Okay, here you go. All right, so. We've got a for loop here now for i is equal to zero. Let's set it to two five five. And then as long as i is greater than so with motors, you're not going to be able to see any movement from the motor, you know, at less than like whatever, you know, twenty or thirty. So let's set it to, for example, twenty. So if, as long as i is less than, as long as i is greater than 20, then decrement i, okay, and then so that's our for loop here. We're going to have another for loop where we're going to make it basically climb back up again. So we'll say for i is equal to, and then we'll do uh, 20, as long as i is less than, Two five five, then increment i. So we're going to try and slow. We'll slow. We'll start the motor off at full speed, slow it down, and then increase it back up again. Okay, so we're just going to do. Let's just do one direction first. So one direction like the band. Digital right, high. So we'll set it to the to the right. So we have the motor spinning to the right, going down towards twenty. So it spins to the right and slows down, right? And then let's make it spin to the left, the opposite way. So I don't know if I've got my right, left, right here, but uh, it's going to go one way or the other. So low and then this way, high. And is there anything else I need to do? Okay, well, we need some sort of delay here because it's going to decrement down from 255 to 20 within less than a second. So we're not going to see anything. So we want it. So for each incrementation of the loop, let's set a delay for 100 milliseconds. Again, you might be looking at this and saying, what the hell is this guy doing? But give me a break. I don't know what I'm doing. <laughs> I have an idea in my head of what I want to do. But I haven't really done much programming recently. Okay, so we should be able to just get rid of all of this now. But analog writes here. Okay, no, wait, this isn't gonna, is this gonna work? I mean, because we haven't actually set, okay, wait, hang on, hang on. No, this, this is, this is wrong. So right now here, we're just setting it to high and going downwards, but we're not, we need another, we need, oh, I know what I'm trying to say, but I can't say it. Here we need to use this. We need to be using this analog right enable two five five. But we, okay, it needs to be I basically. So if we did okay, if we did analog enable and then I like that, 
Yeah. Yeah. Okay. And I'm gonna write like that. I think this will work now. I think so. Let's just comment all of this out. All right, let's give it a go. What's the worst that can happen? All right, so currently the it's the old old code here that's running. So let's just ignore that for now. Let's just hit upload and then hopefully now we should see. Okay, so it's uploading now. So it's going fast to slow. Look at that. Is it, it's doing it. You can hear the buzzing getting louder, which means that there's not enough energy to push the motor anymore. There you go. So it ran out of power to push the motor, you know, well before 20. Can you hear that ringing sound? There you go. Now it's powerful enough to spin it the other way. Well, would you look at that? I did it. <laughs> oh, that is crazy. And then let's go faster again. Okay, so that's a problem. Do you see what, hap what happened there was the program... Let's just uh, turn this off. So what happened there was the the program finished and then it started again at full whack the other way because I've got it obviously going a different direction. So maybe the way to combat that would be to just have it go the same way um both times so then it speeds up and up and up and up and up and then yeah okay so 20 was too low i believe let's set it to 50. let's maybe try this at 200 milliseconds okay let's try that so upload turn this back on okay So you can see it's going fast and getting slower. So I want it to start speeding up without fully stopping. So I think it should do it this time because 50, it should still be able to spin. Okay, it looks like it is. Might, it's gonna, probably going to fully stop. It's almost stopping. Okay, there you go, yeah. So it's not able to spin it at 50. Obviously, if I took this thing off, it probably would be able to, but this has obviously weight, which um, means the motor has more to push. So 50, it's not spinning. So currently, let's say our, our I variable now is probably at a value of like 70 or something. So it's ticking down to 50. Then when it gets to 50, it's got to climb back up to the speed that it's able to actually push the motor at. And then now it's going back up again. So now I'm intrigued to see what happens when it gets, when the program finishes now. It shouldn't have that rapid change of direction the other way. It should just, we shouldn't know that the program's finished. I should go up to 255 and then start climbing back down again smoothly without that sudden jolt to the opposite way. So let's see. Yeah, so you see that we didn't notice. The program's already finished now and it started again, the, the new program. So I'm, gonna, I'm just going to increase this 50 variable up to 100 so we don't get this. Um, we don't get this, this time where it stops like this and it doesn't have any power. So let's increase that to so upload again now. There we go. So now we shouldn't see it slow. We shouldn't see it stop. It should just slow down and then climb back up and slow down. It should be like a nice constant um, pulsing, which is cool because if you if you actually attach this to a fan, that'd be a nice way to have a fan where you just had it going really fast, slow down, then we're back up again. And you've got like a nice slowly pulsating fan there. So it's going slower. My hand actually hurting. We're just holding this here. <laughs> So hopefully it shouldn't stop. There you go. So it's speeding back up again. Perfect. So the motor can't push at a speed of probably about 80 or something. But at 100 it can still keep this ticking over. So there you go. It's speeding back up again. And then it'll keep doing that on the loop. This is cool. I enjoyed this. I'm glad I tried it. 
if you enjoyed this leave a like and yeah i shall see you guys in the next one we're almost finished now thanks for watching guys